says how far it is to the pollen. But then, so they're on, think of it straight up and down, they are on this um, comb. Straight up and down is the location of the sun. So they will, they will take that location of the sun, and if they say, well, the sun is where that light is up at the top of the room here, and they say, well, the pollen is over that corner. So they will tilt X number of degrees, do the waggle dance that way, come around, waggle dance the other way, and they will tilt it based on where the sun is when the bees leave. Now, they may have been gone, say, a mile. They're not doing the coming back in just a very short amount of time. So by the time they get back, they then have to know the whole time they're doing the dance, they will then adjust it to where the sun is now when those bees leave. So that the other bees can find their pollen. They know directional, they know distance, they know all these things, and the other bees can figure it all out and they head off to find the new pollen. So it's incredible the things that they learn and they can figure out from this. They've even tried it with having a pollen source like on one side of a mountain and the other side, and obviously the sun, every time the bees come right back, do them to the exact distance and angles, and they come back and bees can find it. So, pretty incredible. Will you uh, do, give an example of the waggle dance? Would <laughs> <laughs> I do that? Uh, no, I won't. That's in the next class. Yeah, that's something a little bit different. <laughs> Um, how about how about I'll see if I happen to find one when we're in the looking at the bees themselves. Uh, <laughs> I won't promise we'll find one. It's not the same. But. Yeah, it's really not. It's really not. Because um, trust me, you won't want to eat any honey after <laughs> I do that. Um, a bee will die if she stings you. She has a barbed stinger, and when she stings you and then pulls out, she pulls not only a little pollen sack, not a pollen, but a venom sack with her, but pulls out a lot of her intestines with her because and she dies. So bees are not going to sting you unless they really feel threatened. When you get stung and you're outside of things, it's mostly wasps, hornets, those things. Bees, they really don't care about you. They've got pollen to be getting, they've got work to be doing. You are simply in the way. And they'll go around you rather than sting you. But they will protect the hive if they think that that's something that's needed. So I've been stung from when we got our beef at the end of April till now, I think I've been stung about eight, maybe nine times. That's why you're being mean to your bees. Yeah. I know. Well, because I'm the one going way into their hive. They're not really pleased about that a lot of times. Most people aren't going into a hive. But if you do, most times also, I rarely, today I will, I'll wear a full cover that goes to my wrists and I've got long sleeves. Most times I put on just a veil and I'm in shorts and short sleeves. And so I make it stung on my arm or... A leg or something it's not that big a deal so and the sting itself it's really more the next two days or so where the area around where the venom got in is a little and the venom sack will keep pumping so if you do get stung get a fingernail underneath it and pick it off your arm quick or something less less venom less pain later a couple benadryl and you're fine um if anyone is anyone allergic to bees that you know because i do we do keep an epi pin in the house in case i need to hit something but i'm good so the drones. Drones are the males. They have one job and one job only. Mate with the queens. Other than that, they're useless in the hive. They have no job in the hive. Um, they have very large eyes because they have to be able to find the queen when and the, they, they mate about 60 to 70 feet in the air off in the middle of, the, you know, it's what they call the drone zone, where the drones go and the new, new queens go to meet the drones. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, it's up in the air somewhere. You can't find it unless you got the invite. So they, they check them at the door and that's what they bring in. And so the, the queens, they, they meet there. They don't mate with their own queen. So the queen from their hive, they don't meet, mate with her. They mate with other queens from the area. And they'll mate, and like I said, the queen, well, when the queen mates with the drone, the drone dies. The lower half of its body is ripped to shreds oh. in the in the sense, and they die. Um, if a drone does not mate and makes it all, and lives all the way till fall, well, uh, they're going to eat more because they're larger. 
They're going to, um, they don't do anything in the hive. So the workers bite a couple holes in their wings and push them out of the hive. <laughs> and there they die. Because the drones, because the, the workers know that come spring, we'll just make more. We don't need them. Lesson for the state welfare program. Right. Get rid of the men. The men don't do much. It's going to waste all the food. Get rid of them when we run out of food. So, but they have no stinger also. So if I can, if I find a, a drone, there's probably about 300 or so in the hive at any time. We can, we'll, we can pick one out. You can hold it because it's not going to sting you. It has no stinger. Um, not much, not much use to it. In your handouts, it seems, I didn't realize till late last night, that there's an extra page, the same drone thing, but it does show down at the bottom of the picture, and that's why I put it in here. It does show the length of time it takes for gestation for a worker versus a drone versus a queen. So it's an interesting little picture, but I should have put other text above it, I must have. So are the, drone, the drones aren't created, they're just genetically, that's what they are? I mean, that's we, yeah, so the queen, <laughs> knows, the queen will put an unfertilized egg occasionally in, and those will become drones. Oh, okay. And they become males and drones, because they're not fertilized, they, they don't. And so you really will have in a hive, all of them have the genetics of the queen, and of eight to ten other hives that they'll mix with because she's going to be have mated with a number of them to mix up the genetics. And that those drones who have those genetics then go out and mate with a different queen, and she gets different genetics. So it mixes up those that genetic pool pretty quickly in the hive and around your area. So if you have the Italian bees and somebody else has the others, that, that, uh, it doesn't matter. Genetic. It's all based on who the queen, what type of queen you have. So they're Italians because you have an Italian queen. And that's the characteristics they will take on as to honey production or wax and those type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, this spring we've got a black queen. And, well, the, and I've noticed now that our bees from that hive are predominantly black. And that could be. Um, Carniolans are actually, the, the bees themselves are quite dark. They're more of a gray than the bright yellow black that you're used to seeing. Um, and the, queens are, the, the queen is quite dark. Um, certain types of ones, some of the Minnesota ones and such, will be a lot darker of a queen, and the bees can be a little darker. You know, everyone's quintessential yellow and black striped bee are just not really out there. They're a lot lighter in color or dark, based on age also. As they get older, they get darker. These are, the, the second hype, which is the black ones, are not very nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and so they, they you know, those can be some of the, there are um, dark, um, some darker strains. And they can be kind of mean. Yeah. Um, if anyone's wondering, also when you say not nice, racism, boy, the <laughs> the dark ones, um, not the dark ones, but you have everyone hears about the killer bees oh, yeah. and such. <clears throat> killer bees, by their name, there really came from an attempt to some researchers down in South America were trying to mix queens that um, produced more um, honey and also lived longer and produced bigger cells, they were doing some stuff, and the queens got away. And mixed with some types of bees down in South America that were more feral and aggressive bees. And so they've been making their way up. The problem is, because they were feral bees and such from South America, they don't handle cold well. So you'll see them that they've made it as far as like Arizona, to the U.S. and some of the South areas, they really can't, they, they can't live in the winter as far north as we are. So we don't really worry about killer bees here. They may make it as far as St. George, but they just can't get, once they hit winter, they die out. They don't do well. So we're not really worried about killer bees in this area. So a type of hive. These little guys up here at the top, those are called skeps. You know, the, you see them on top of the state building and those things. This is what we, they used to keep bees in. And bees would go in, they put all the bees in there. How do you get the, the honey out of this? Unravel it. You take the <laughs> whole thing and throw it in the river. Kill all the bees. Oh. oh. And then unravel it. And then you gotta find more bees for the next year. Not a great way